Okay, I've been asked to demonstrate uh, preparing a flower arrangement, an Easter flower arrangement. So we're going to give it a go. Um, I guess the, the first thing that we need to think about is what flowers and what container we'll be going to use. So when you're out shopping, when I'm out shopping for flowers, I'm always thinking about, well, where am I going to put them and what container am I going to put them in? Um, so for this arrangement, I thought we'd do a smallish, perhaps, arrangement for a table, um, and we'd use a lowish container, which I've got here. Um, I'm going to try and use this container, which is a black container, um, but I've, I've just put some, some paper around it um, and fastened that with a pin at the back, just to remove the black. Um, so the flowers that I've bought and that we're going to use, um, some chrysanthemum stems, um, yellow chrysanthemums. I've got some yellow freesias, quite tall ones. Got those. Got some red tulips. I have half a dozen of those. May not use them all. Um, and then some daffodils. A bunch of daffodils. And then I've picked a few things from the garden, so I've got a couple of stems of viburnum there um, that are growing in the garden. A rather sad looking hellebore, but I don't have many of those in the garden. And then some blue grape hyacinths and um, some other pink hyacinth, but again I don't, I don't have a lot of that in the garden. The important thing about when you buy flowers and that you're going to arrange them um, is particularly if you're going to arrange them in oases, for example, is that you do prepare the flowers. So, and even if you're going to put them in a vase, that you prepare them. And the most important thing to do is to make sure that you strim and you get rid of all the leaves um, on the stems, because otherwise you put those in water and they just make a murky mess and they, they reduce the, uh, the length of time that your flowers will stay, stay looking, looking good. So prepare your flowers, and if you're going to use them and put them in oasis, then, then I always let the flowers stand for at least 24 hours in, in a bucket of water or in a vase so that they get a good drink before you start popping them into to the oasis. So the other thing that we need to think about for this arrangement is some greenery. Um, so I've got some greenery that again comes from the garden. So uh, a little bit of red robin um, and again it's it's looking for greenery that you think might go with with the fat flower palette um, so that's uh, hopefully quite attractive that red robin i've got some some bottle brush here um, smallish smallish greenery perhaps for a smallish arrangement so let's see if that will work i picked a few ivy leaves Got plenty of that in my garden, so uh, a few ivy leaves, see what we can do with that. And some uh, variegated ivy, again that's got some yellow colouring to it. And again the thing about your greenery is that you want to give it, give it a bit of soak, like I've said, before you use it, particularly if you're using it in Oasis, and take off, those, um, take off the bottom leaves really, so you haven't got leaves standing in water. And also if you've got ugly looking leaves, then uh, get rid of those really, so that you're left with the, with the, nice, uh, the nice leaves at the top. So for this arrangement, I'm going to um, think about if I can put it on a, on a, on a wooden log. <laughs> now I'm sure you haven't got many of these at home. Um, I only happen to have a couple because we use them at my daughter's wedding, so I, I kept hold of a few. But later on, I'll show you what else you might be able to use for what I'm going to do. do. So the idea is that that will be the base of the, the flower arrangement, sit on the table, and we'll, we'll be using that um, on top of the, the slice of log. So back to our container. So what I've decided to do is um, because of the flowers that I'm using, I'm not going to use Oasis. I'm going to try and not use Oasis. Also, Oasis isn't terribly eco-friendly, so uh, 
we don't we don't want to we don't want to go there. Um, however, I'll, I'll show you what what we could do if we did use Oasis. So for this arrangement, I'm going to use a little bit of crumpled chicken wire. Um, not crumple it up too much, but just enough that it's going to hold flowers in place. And I'm going to pop that pop that in the uh, in the container just so that it 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 some, comes a little proud uh, proud of the container. Um, Fill that with water. Now, I've got another one here just to show you. I've got a container that I could use, which I've, I've popped a piece of Oasis, uh, green Oasis in it. Um, it wouldn't be a bad thing to, to use that, though with some of these flowers that I've picked, like the daffodils, like the spring flowers and the great hyacinths, potentially the tulips, they're not that easy to push into oasis. They tend to, to break or you know just have trouble putting putting them into the oasis. So perhaps some um, will try and stay away from that uh, with those sorts of flowers. But chrysanthemums, carnations, um, all those flowers, freesias go in quite easily into the oasis. So what I'm doing here is just taping the oasis so that it stays in place. So that's a bit of green floristry tape. Again, unlikely you're gonna have some of that at home, but potentially sellotape will do. And you just wanna pop it there onto the sides of the container just to hold it, it firm um, so it, it, it doesn't move around. And again, if I was using this container, because you can see the green oasis and I don't really wanna see that when I've done my arrangement, I've just created a bit of a sleeve with a bit of paper Again, appropriate colours, pop that over, and then we come out with, with greenery and flowers. Anyway, let's set that to one side, and let's, let's try with the container with the, the wire mesh in it. So I guess we, we, we need some secateurs or scissors, and then we gonna, we're going to start with the greenery, and going to pop some greenery into the, into the oasis. And again, um, so this is about cutting greenery, cutting flowers to the size that you want, that's proportionate to the pot, um, proportionate to, to, to the area that you're, you're gonna put, put them in. Um, difficult to, to explain other than that, it's a little bit in the eye, rather than sort of measuring with a, with a measure. Um, but I guess you, you've, got to, you've got to think about, well, okay, what's my smallest size flowers as well? Because um, you don't want your greenery so tall and then your smaller flowers so small that it all looks out of proportion. So here we go. We're going to, we're going to put a little bit of greenery into the pot. We're going to cut to size. We're going to take off some of those uh, horrible leaves that I mentioned, unattractive leaves. And just looking at the bend, the bend in the, uh, in the, in the piece of foliage, um, just, just let it fall into, into the container as naturally as, as you can, you can do. So push it through, push it through the, uh, uh, through the chicken wire. And here we go with a little bit of the bottle brush. Similarly, put some of that in. That's a rather tall piece. That may not look so good. So this is where I'd start with, with filling up with some greenery um, and, and putting that around, around the arrangement. And then I think we'll try a couple of the, the ivy leaves. Let's pop those in, get those two to hang over a little bit if we can. Shall 
sure we'll find lots of ivy on our walks around in the countryside. But as I said, I happen to have plenty of that in my garden growing up a few of the trees. So there we go. I think we just need another piece of red robin there to give us a little bit of uh, centre point. And we've got a little bit of a shape going. Okay, let's 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 work with a few flowers now. So um, let's let's start with a few of the daffodils. Um, and again, we've we've got to judge the size. We don't want to make this uh, too big, too tall. But at the same time, we want to to see some of these lovely, lovely flowers. So it's just poking them in randomly at first. And then let's try some tulips. Now, tulips, interesting um, flowers. I love a bowl of tulips or a, a vase of tulips because tulips Tulips have a habit of growing and uh, when they're in the vase and taking all and floating into all sorts of shapes. So they, they, are, they are really uh, lovely to work with. But anyway, I take off the thicker leaves down the bottom um, only because they'll clog up your vase because um, they're quite thick. So again, make sure you just give them a little cut so that um, they can, they, can, they can drink, they haven't dried out at the base. And then again, randomly pop them in. Again, watching, watching your sizing so that you keep them all fairly, fairly even in size. So how many have we got in there? One, two, three. So we've got five. Um, I've got um, eight, eight here. So we'll go for six. And we can always put, put another one in if, if we think it, it, it needs it. Okay, let's, let's, then, then, let, let's then use the freezer. And again, get these to stand a little a little proud. These 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 are gorgeous flowers. Again, when they when they open, that one's a little bit long, perhaps for the size of the arrangement. And again, it's it's spreading them around so that uh, they're evenly distributed. I'll just show you around like that, so you get a sense of, uh, of what's going on at the back as well at the front. Um, Going to use all the all the freesia. even the little the little pieces that uh, are cut off. Um, you never know; they might uh, they may they might flower. So there we go. I'm thinking these chrysanthemums might be a little bit too heavy um, to put in there now. I've kept this a fairly sort of uh, Easter looking arrangement. I guess it is a little bit about seeing it from above as well, which uh, I'm not sure you can, you can see terribly. But anyway, let's, let's add some of these other flowers. So this is the hellebore that I mentioned. Um, so let's put that in where it can be seen a little bit. And then we've got a couple of pieces of viburnum. Um, I'm going to cut that one there, strip off the leaves and pop that in where I've seen a bit of a gap. And likewise, no, 
with that one, that piece of viburnum, it's got a nice little bend in it, so something good to put at the side and it'll, it'll, it'll drop out a little bit of the side. So always looking at the, the shape of your, your piece of greenery or indeed your flower, just to, uh, to use it in your arrangement. So there we go, another one with a slight bend in it that we can, we can put so that it, it sort of comes out, out the side. Okay, what else can we use? Um, we could try a little bit of the, uh, the variegated ivy. I'm gonna cut that there. Fairly short, so that it, it covers up some of that wire mesh underneath and, and the, the color is, gives a bit of depth perhaps to, to, to the arrangements. I guess that's what, uh, Cutting stuff short and, and putting it in the vase, our vase actually does. Let's see, can we do one more piece of this? Again, stripping off the leaves because you want to keep the best leaves. And again, pushing that in without breaking, without breaking the flowers. Okay, I've got a couple of other bits here, a few other flowers that I haven't used. Some of these grape hyacinths. A little bit delicate, but uh, I think they'd, they'd add a little bit of different, little bit of colour there. So gently pushing those in into the arrangement. If you were trying to put these in, in Oasis, I think you'd, 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 you'd struggle. Um, so that's why I've gone for the uh, chicken wire. So again, we're putting them in so that they're spread around the, around the arrangements. Okay, and the last flower that I haven't used is um, this sort of pinky purpley looking hyacinth. So again, let's see if we can find a home for him or her. Um, it's, not very sh it's not very long, so uh, that's going to sit down the bottom of the arrangement. Um, Okay, so I'll just twist that around a little bit, see what I think. I think I'm missing a little bit here, um, just to even it out. So we'll, uh, perhaps we'll use a, a, another daffodil there. Um, see if we can get a daff daffodil in, into there. Let's use a couple more daffodils. So now we're getting a little bit full up. Um, so it's just a matter of trying to find a, find a hole if you wanna put something else, put something else in. Right, I think the important thing is that you don't wanna see any of the chicken wire, because that's a bit unsightly. So I can see a little bit here, so I'm gonna pop a, an ivy leaf in and push that, push that down. So that covers up the, uh, the chicken wire. Okay, I think that's, that looks uh, reasonable to me. We've used a selection of flowers. Um, okay, so we're gonna set that to one side for a moment, whilst we uh, return to our Nice log slice. Um, and I just thought, oh, well, it's Easter, and Easter is associated with uh, lots of things. Obviously, our Christian calendar and uh, death and resurrection and new birth. 
Um, one of the things that I thought we'd cover our, our log with is some moss. Um, lovely at this time of the year, out on walks, see it all over the place. So yes, I did pick this from the countryside um, on one of, uh, one of the walks that Janet and I were on in the week. So I'm just gonna, just gonna just put a little bit of this, uh, this moss on the, uh, on the log. Because I think that says something about spring, says something about uh, Easter, says something, the, the green, some vibrancy there, some sort of uh, looking forward um, to, to what else nature is, is, going, is going to give us. So onto that, we're going to put our flower arrangement. So I think we're going to try and settle that settle that in one corner and then I thought a few little treats um, would be quite nice to add to the decoration and finish the decoration. Came across this uh, painted egg the other day in, in a cupboard um, so we'll, we'll put that on there and then I've got a uh, a little bowl of uh, uh, chocolate Easter eggs. So again, I think we'll just put some of those on very randomly, just to uh, add to to the effect. Obviously, it'd be great if we've got any kids, children visiting. They can help themselves to a nice chocolate egg. Although I'm not sure how many visits we're going to be getting this year. And then just to, to finish, I'm going to, I've got a couple of chocolate rabbits um, or baby rabbits. Um, and we're going to stick those on. Uh, adds a bit of colour, a bit of effect on, on the... Uh, on the moss there. So um, there you have it, uh, an Easter arrangement um, which hopefully you can see. I haven't quite got it in the place that I'm going to put it so I'll, I'll, I'll take a photo of that and, and um, but there you have it. Okay I promised to show you the finished product in situ and here it is on a little table um, all ready for Easter. So I hope you, you, you can try something like this. I know you perhaps won't have a log but use a tray, put the moss on a tray and it'll look as effective. Um, but don't forget to water it because flowers do need a fair bit of water and, and, and some of these drink, uh, drink quite a bit like the daffodils and tulips. So happy Easter everybody.